What do you do with the stock of a high-quality off-road vehicle company that makes snowmobiles in a year when we're in mid-November, but it feels like the summer? Now, what are we going to do here? That's the conundrum of Polaris, PII, the big manufacturer of all sorts of all-terrain vehicles as well as motorcycles, with a stock that's down at just under 25% year-to-date, in part because some of their key markets, like agriculture, energy, are in pretty dire straits, and in part because the super freaking strong dollar slamming the company's international business and making imports from foreign competitors cheaper, allowing them to take some share from Polaris. That said, after this company reported a solid, albeit imperfect, quarter last month, Polaris plunged more than 10% in a single session. And at these levels, I gotta wonder, this whole thing seems very overdone, seems way too punished for me. So let's take a closer look with Scott Wine, the chairman and CEO of Polaris Industries, as well as being a former supply officer who served in the Navy for seven years after graduating from Annapolis in 1989. He happens to be in town right now because he's being honored later this week by the Iraq and Afghanistan veterans of America. Mr. Wine, welcome back to Mad Money. Thanks, Jim. Good to see you, Scott. Great to be here. One thing is for certain, I know that you've got adversity, but you start out in your last conference call, I absolutely love it, with an Arthur Brooks, President of American Enterprise Institute no notion of the strong correlation between happiness and success. You're a different kind of executive. Why did you start with that? Well, I mean, I feel like that if, if we're going to get Polaris back on the right track. It really has to do with entrepreneurism. That's what Arthur Brooks was talking about, is this opportunities with free enterprise and what it means to America. And that's how we run Polaris, to try to create opportunities for everybody to make a difference in the company. I think it's important, because to point out, we have a terrific audience here today, and to honor all veterans, that you did not sit here and talk in your conference call or any of your notes and say, woe is me, the dollar's too strong, we can't compete. It's much more about how your team, and you always talk team, is going to fight its way out of this gym. Well, we have the best team in power sports. I mean, hands down, we have the best team, in, which includes several hundred people that served in the military. I mean, we believe in hiring veterans, about 5% of our US workforce. But we don't make excuses. We deal with reality. We did not come on here and talk about how much the dollar helped us right. in 2011, 2012. Right. And so we're not going to come on here and talk about the pains. We will find a way to make an opportunity out of this. And I think right now when we're trading at multiples that we haven't been at since right. 2009, probably a, a good opportunity for us to get things going. But you do talk about, in your notes, global slowdown you're worried about. You're worried about rate increase. There is a strong dollar. These are concerns. I'm not saying they're excuses. But you're saying they're concerns. You're also worrying about power sports growth moderating. But isn't this something that we all want well, we never want moderating growth. Right. We want to grow as fast as we possibly okay. can. But what we've talked about is one of the, the core leadership tenets that I have, and I learned it in the military, is you deal with reality. And you right. assess the situation. And when I talked about the, uh, the slowing global economy, we were just assessing the situation. Right. With U.S. GDP at you know, a, a point and a half in the third quarter, you know, it's not a perfect environment for us. But what we know is that we can make growth happen, and that's what we're committed to doing. Now, motorcycles, we know that other countries are trying so hard to take share. And they're doing that by debasing their own currencies, making so that their products, which oftentimes I believe are inferior from my point of view, are able to come in well under the prices that you make because you have most of your plants in America. What are you doing about imports, say, that come from Japan, where they've debased the yen to the point where it makes it very difficult to make a choice of buying American? Well, you know, I have tremendous respect for our Japanese competitors. Okay. In fact, we've competed with Honda and Yamasa Yamaha, Suzuki, Kawasaki for you know, dozens of years in the off-road vehicle business. So we know how to play that game. I will tell you that our motorcycle business was up only 154% in the third quarter. You know, retail was up 60%. So we know how to play this game, and I think it starts with great products. And I do dare say this is a beautiful product. And what's great with all of these uh, young men from West Point here is that the Indian Scout was the most popular uh, motorcycle in World War II. In fact, it ultimately is the reason we were able to buy Indian the business so cheaply is because it went out of business because they, the Indian motorcycle company shifted all of their production to the war effort. Okay, all right, now, but also I think it's important to point out, you're really not losing share in this country, despite, uh, for, for your overall product, despite the weakening uh, currencies that you fight against, you're not losing share. Actually, it's good that you point out market share. I mean, we talk about slowing growth, and I'll remind you that our slowing growth was still up 12% in right. the third quarter, but um, we gained market share in each of our product lines, motorcycles probably the most, but even in the most competitive aspect, the side-by-side -side business, we still continue to gain share. And you are totally long-term oriented. I like the fact that you, it, in, in all, and I, want, I always want everyone to do the homework, but you're building for the future. You're still opening plants. You're still expanding. You're not thinking about the idea that maybe the world is less confident. You are giving them the equipment that they want and they'll buy it. Well, ultimately, I mean, you've got to make the best product and right. we are committed to doing that. We've got about 600 engineers around the world. 
Um, but we're building a new plant in Huntsville that's going to allow us, and really it's part of our lean transformation, to be able to serve our customers better, higher quality, lower cost, and shorter lead times. We think that's going to be a competitive advantage for well, us. Well, I've frankly never seen your stock this cheap, and I've got to tell you that's why one of the reasons I want to join. Well, we're here it, to fix it. It's just way too low. All I right. Think so. Fair enough. Okay. That's Scott Wine, Chairman and CEO of Polaris Industries PI. I hope you use their stuff as much as I do. I really love it. I've used it plenty, but most importantly, the stock is really dirt, really dirt cheap. Stay with Kramer. Thanks. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.